Rhino 7 has some great built-in tools. A lot of the parametric tools now are part of it. There were some great tools already, and that's what we're gonna show in this video today. Hi, I'm Brandon with I Am The Studio, and we go into great stuff about architects and designers. Uh, go ahead and like, subscribe to this channel for more content. So I just got Rhino 7, and I'm looking at some of the cool features it has. And one of the cool things I see in Rhino is this pipe feature. It's something that you will find in Grasshopper, where you make a line, you just set pipe setting, and it will show it in the model, but you don't render it to you like or bake it out. You know that's where it becomes a geometry, and that geometry is typically clunky. As you can see here, um, I'm gonna zoom extent. I have like these three surfaces, but you know these things in between are actually not even surfaces because it's actually a function. And we're gonna go on how to make that. This one of the exciting things. So let's go ahead and just start with a new file. So the new features in Rhino 7 are really cool. Um, where I can do a poly curve or a spline. Uh, make sure we put that right. Command N. Uh, you just do curve, that's fine. The curve method. Uh, spline is what you do in AutoCAD. So a lot of time in AutoCAD now. Uh, and so now I just copy something you know i'll notice myself i'll notice that there are control points visible which you can take and edit and that's useful because i was has, always having to come and click show the points when i wanted to edit those um but the que question is of course if you're trying to do anything else just make sure not to click the points if you mean to click the line um so i i did that and what i what i want to also do is i want to just mirror it from uh some like a middle point and now I look and I see these pieces. And so I want it to be a little different, have some variation. And so this is going to be on my, my plane. And actually, I even might make the top one a little bit smaller. So I have a little bit of a shrinking function going on. Okay, and now with this, I will loft my top and bottom curve. So I have a simple, simple surface, but I want to have like some variation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rebuild the ISO and I'll just do everything from that surface. Now I have the ability to sort of choose my rebuilding method. And uh, what I want to do, uh, and this is really just a tool for me. I did 24. Um, I'm actually going to go into my curve function and go to my curve, at, well actually curve object tool. And I'm going to extract some ISO curves. And what I want to do and I'm just going to do the U right now, is I was looking at each of these. And of course, I could divide curve and sort of do it um, parametrically with Grasshopper. But I, I just want to get this done sort of simply uh, for this exercise. And it's just that simple. I'm, I'm aiming to get close to these curves. I'm trying to get like that simple idea out. And now I'm going to duplicate the border. And I'm going to also go back to my curve objects and extract now um, my uh, V direction. And so uh, get those. What I want to do now is make a glass layer. And my surface is going to be in the, the glass layer. And I'm going to click here, glass. And one of the new features. Rhino, uh, like I really came from five, I sort of skipped seven, but finding that I could just click here and get my materials like that easily is valuable to me. And I'm gonna just turn that a little darker gray. So all this properties is just right in the corner. And also why I wanna click on something like this outer curve, this is my base layer. Um, my base layer, if I just make that a material like a metal and I make it a little darker um, then me going into shaded mode, it's sort of you just see the default material right now. But if I go, of course, into my rendered mode, starting to show like some things, but this right now is still a line. But if I click on that object, property object, I can go ahead and just click on this command here for curve piping. And as I click here, I say five is the width that is going to be, and there you go. I have a parametric pipe and it's metal and metal sheen. 
Now the thing is it's not baked into the object right now. So that's the one thing about this curve and it is interesting to sort of get that just in my model. But the beneficial thing for sure is, um, I'm gonna make sure I'm selecting that curve. The beneficial thing for that is that, uh, like click here, uh, is that it is very much not taking too much of my my processing power. You see I've just done like a basic and it's, it's, it's not like taking a long time to load or anything. So now I'm gonna select my other curves with my cell curve command. And I'll make sure I'm not selecting with my control, make sure I'm not selecting any of my other lines here. So now for these, I wanna go ahead and just make these on my, um, my other layer here. I want to turn these into, I'll just put them here. These are gonna be my secondary curves. And in my pipe, I'm gonna turn these on and I'm gonna make them five. And actually these are, could be two. And what I can do is go ahead and uh, make that, maybe that's a different sort of color. It's still gonna be metal. This is gonna be the darkest color um, of my system. So now this panel wall and it's, it's really nice. And so all I need to do is maybe just uh, decide save and file. <laughs> Uh, pipe wall is uh, maybe make that a group and so just make a simple copy and just like that I have this going in and it's really awesome I do of course want to make sure that my things are on the right layer so my glass it's in the metal layer. And we'll make it blue or light blue just to keep that control when I'm going to my other mode. But seeing this in the model is just a great new thing that I'm seeing from Rhino. Of course, the rendering is really great as well. Just look at this render. And I can just come up with an idea like that. And I wouldn't have to do a bunch of Rhino scripting. That's a quick way to do it. I'll show later sort of some Rhino stuff. I'm the Studio is glad to bring you this episode from our complete Rhino Guide series. If you enjoyed this content, give the video a like and subscribe to the I'm Studio channel and click the bell for the latest notifications. For a link to our latest complete Rhino Guide course, see the links in the description below. See you in the next episode.